So, oh, Ildiku, uh, your new film On Body and Soul is one of the nine finalists for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Uh, congratulations on making the cut. Uh, tell us a little bit about the beginnings of this film. Uh, where did the idea come from? Wow. Um, everybody asks it, and it's the most difficult question. Um, in fact, it started from a feeling. Um, it was early March. Uh, I was walking down the street. Uh, it was chilly, but you smelled the spring in the air. And in those moments, you really, really feel a lot of things. Uh, your heart wants to burst. Um, and there is a new beginning in the air. And you see other people walking down the street with blank faces. And you know very well that they just feel the same, the very same. But what they are seeing is also a blank face on your face. So I wanted to make a film about all the, what is beneath the surface, all this passion and all these big, big stories, human stories, um, um, all the longing, all the pain, all the beauty. And uh, it was very, very quickly done. I, I don't know how. Generally, I, I work for one year on a script. It was written in several weeks. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit more about the writing? I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of the various themes that you wanted to explore. Uh, how did you arrive at the specific story that you wanted to tell? Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> Generally, you really, really work a lot. You construct your characters. You, I, I am, for example, one who is throwing out scenes very easily. I rewrite a lot. And here, I just really had these two people in front of me. I had the feeling I know them well. I know them deeply. And I just followed them. I wrote down what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Where did the idea come from to have uh, them linked by this very specific dream uh, in which they are both deers out in this uh, beautiful uh, snowy forest? Uh, one more question I cannot answer, <laughs> really. Um, the truth is, I just wanted to put them in a situation where they are forced out from their comfort zone, because their comfort zone is very miserable. They have a very close little life, gray life, and both of them, they chose this just to be safe. And not at such extent, but many of us, we are making choices just rather to live our life um, just to be safe and spare us the risk and spare us life itself. And uh, when I was in China, in Beijing, presenting the film, someone told me that there is a 400 years old Chinese opera with the same topic. Uh, in fact, uh, there, these two heroes uh, meeting their dreams just in their human form not in the animal form and uh, somehow i i was always uh, thrilled by that sort of um, involuntary uh, capacity of animals to be really present in the moment um they um they are just fully there always every moment of their life and we can't do it, but it would be great to have of that a bit more. Well, animals certainly are uh, integral, not only to the plot, but also to the setting. These two characters work in a slaughterhouse, and the movie does a really good job of uh, giving you a sense of what it's like to work in a place like that and to uh, have that kind of a job. Did you do any kind of uh, research yourself as you were writing the script or preparing to do this movie uh, into that line of work? or? I mean, did you visit slaughterhouses and get a sense for the place? Well, for sure. For sure. The shocking thing was that uh, many details I wrote um, 
before ever visiting a slaughterhouse um, was justified when I visited one. For example, there is a scene uh, in the film where the director of the slaughterhouse, um, Andrea, um, is um, having a job interview with a new recruit. And he tells, if you don't have uh, compassion towards these animals, then you can't work here. And that was exactly what I heard from the, the director of that slaughterhouse where we finally worked. There were three possibilities, and I chose this one because of the personality of this director, who was a self-made man. He started as a simple butcher, and uh, he had a true respect for these animals. And his workers had true respect for these animals. And I must say uh, that it is a horrible place because animals die there. But even if we decide not to watch in it, uh, they die. And somehow I felt there more, let's say, I, I felt <clears throat> myself um, in a moment of truth. This is what happens before the steak arrive, arrives to our plate. And it's, it's good to know, good to face it. And not just about our food, about all the other choices we make in life. It's good to know uh, what is the background. And then we can make grown up and real choices in our life. And it was, it was really touching uh, to see the, the tenderness, very instinctive solidarity of the workers towards these animals. It, it made me remember those tribal um, tri times where we were hunting down the animal, killing it, bringing it home, eating it, and then thanking for it. It was in the air, and otherwise it's not in the air. How we raise animals, it's absolutely without any elementary respect. Absolutely, uh, and the movie does not uh, shy away from uh, portraying that. Uh, I made the mistake of eating some lunch uh, while I was watching the first half of this movie. Uh, there's a scene in there I don't want to spoil for anybody, but um, needless to say, it really makes you think about eating meat. Um, it, you talk about um, making adult decisions, and that's interesting because the character of Maria seems to be uh, stuck in this state of childhood or, or pre-adolescence. You know, so much of it is about her uh, trying to start a relationship with a man, and she's uh, having trouble being able to do that. I wonder if you could talk a bit about that. Well, in a film, you show extremities, but what Maria goes through, a very shy person, you can call her somebody with an Asperger syndrome, um, is something I think all of us, we experienced at one or other moment of our life. And uh, first of all, during the, the teenage years, during adolescence, when you have uh, such a strong wish to open up towards the other, but it's so really um, frightening because it's so unknown. Um, it's um, the, the thrill and the fear together. I think all of us, we have memories. I don't know. I don't know how it was for you, but. <laughs> no, no, I do. But it's not easy. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a um, very radical thing what is love, uh, to open up completely towards another human being. And if you defend yourself, if you don't uh, open up completely, then it's not love, then you miss the point. So it's a risky business. And um, so I wanted to show two extreme characters, but two people with whom uh, we can share very basic um, experiences 
so they are not some very very distant people from us even if they are different talk a little bit about the actress who plays her uh, alexandra uh, borble i hope i'm pronouncing that name right um what made her right for the role and how did you work with her to uh get her uh to uh, be convincing in the role and to be able to play somebody who's uh i guess on the spectrum um she's a young actress a theater actress that's her first main role in a film by the way she won best european actress um award yes, she did and uh you can watch it on youtube she just cried like a baby <laughs> <laughs> she's very very different in real life she's a very tough sexy hot chick let's say not at all like maria and uh, this makes her not just a good actress but a great actress in my opinion that's why it was such a pleasure to work with her um, because she really transformed into this uh, into this person we worked together about a month month and a half before the shooting she found this maria in herself and on set i barely had to tell her anything she was just herself this maria and if you are yourself you can't you can't be false you can't be fake mm -hmm. and then uh, the uh, lead actor who plays against her uh, geza uh Mor to... thank you very much <laughs> that's very... this is his uh, first film as well uh where did you find him first and last really because he never ever in his life intended to to appear in a film he is an especially shy person uh, he was um, until recently the director of the biggest uh, most important literary publishing houses in hungary so he comes from literature and um, i was just looking for this role because um, Andrew's role is quite monolithic. I knew that there I have a chance to work with an amateur. With Maria's role, I, I knew that I, I, I need a professional one. So I needed somebody with a real charisma, a real charm, a sort of dry humor, a sort of past in his face. A, a convincing strong presence and he had it so um that's how <laughs> i never ever made any casting session with anybody else i'm very sad to hear this be his last movie he's very quite good in the movie um this film has uh, as i said it was uh, shortlisted for the academy award it's won a number of prizes including at the European Film Awards, as you said, but also at the uh, Berlin International Film Festival and uh, various other places. What has that kind of recognition meant for you and for everyone involved in the movie? Um, we worked uh, somehow, um, um, I'll just tell you what I told to my team uh, on the first day of preparation really th that's what happened listen guys this film won't probably go to any major festivals it doesn't have any of the hooks of what a typical festival film has but this is the way we have to do it otherwise we would just ruin the film and all of them they really understood so deeply what was written in the script what i tried to transmit um, I had an exceptional, exceptional crew, and it was a very, very fine balance work uh, during during the whole process until the the very end, the grading. And um, the the awards are great, um, even um, greater if if it comes with an explanation, and the explanation was really, really wonderful. Uh, but the the biggest um, relief was when we were sitting in in berlin 
We were the first uh, competition films. It was early afternoon, and that was a full house, 2,000 people. And when I heard the first laughs, I thought, oh my god, OK. <laughs> uh, it comes through. Uh, because everything was so settled, uh, fine-tuned, that there was a risk that all this doesn't come through. And it's a surprise again and again as I go around the world to different places. How, what an approachable film we made. Uh, and during the making, we just wanted to hide everything under the surface. So, uh, so the, the main thing is how patient and open and um, respectful people are with, with movies. And it's a wonder because there are so many movies, so many good movies, so many other audiovisual uh, impulses. So I, uh, it, it went against my own prejudices. Well, it's a great movie and uh, congratulations on it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye.